Thank you so much for this invitation to be here in this lovely town. And now I will give you my view of, <laughs> of this journey. Of course, we decide together to move, but uh, 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 my uh, situation were another. <clears throat> uh, uh, I am a biomedical laboratory scientist and with a PhD uh, in medicine from Göteborg University and a postgraduate position at the Department of Urology. It was not obvious for me to move to the rural area. Uh, however, when we got our child, uh, we wanted to move to have more time together and more quality of life and have closer to the daycare, the childcare and the grocery stores and things like that. So we, we, we try to move. <coughs> uh, but I will... Uh, uh, but what will you do in Sturuman as a researcher? It's a small inhabitant close to the Sosjala municipality with approximately 6,000 inhabitants. Uh, and they have a high school but nothing more and a small uh, cottage hospital. <coughs> Well, I had a bit of luck, uh, because the principal that was employed per Daniel at the Lusby Gymnasium, he has started a foundation, uh, and I was employed at Southern Lapland Research Department uh, in Wilhelmina. Uh, and it was a foundation of the communities in Southern Lapland and the re region Westerbotten that are responsible for the health in Sweden. <coughs> And I did my so-called postdoc there in Wilhelmina for nine years. Uh, and I, for the first time, met the Sami, the indigenous people uh, of Sweden. Um, and 2009, the unit were closed. Uh, and it was difficult for small communities in the inland to put in money in this foundation, of course. And 2011, I was employed as a researcher at the Re Region Westerbotten at the Center for Rural Medicine. It's an R&D unit within the primary care in Region Westerbotten since 2014. We have approximately 15 em employees and the main office is in Sturuman. Sorry. Uh, and my colleagues are mainly live in Sturman and some are working at a distance. And we have colleagues in Stockholm and in Köpenhamn. And the funding is mainly external, uh, external funding of different um, developing projects. Uh, yes. Oh, doesn't work. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have two buttons. Uh, yes, uh, this is our main areas that we are working on. The indigenous uh, people, Samish, Helsa, we are working on education and recruitment and good and nära vårdig lesbygd care on all levels in rural areas. And this is a picture of our uh, beautiful town, it's downhills. However, some years ago, we had six suicides in two years' time. And of course, six suicides is not, is not much if you compare to other municipalities, and especially if you compare with the people in Greenland, for example, with numbers over 500 per 100,000 person year. Uh, but in a small community, it had a huge effect. And it, if you count the suicide number in our small village, it will be around 100 per 100,000 uh, inhabitants. In, in, and in Sweden, in the, on the national level, it's approximately 10 per 100,000. So it was, of course, panic and great bereavement in our small village. And how do you handle that? Uh, Yes, and as a researcher, uh, I, of course, wanted to uh, work with uh, evidence-based methods. So I found a review article from Salzman, uh, and he b is describing four things that are important to work with when you are doing research on a municipality level. Uh, and it's 
this says that it was important to work on a broad basis with everybody actually, with different organizations, also with voluntary organizations. And we started to build a group of manager from the region Westerbotten, which is responsible for the health and the administration in the municipality in Sturman and the local police. And how do you do that? Yes, and from the evidence-based methods that I thought uh, we used was the Lancet Psychiatry, the Salzman project uh, article, and the WHO guidelines that is called Preventing Suicide, a Community Engagement cool, uh, Toolkit. We have also the National Strategy Agency of Public Health in Sweden and action plans from other municipalities and organizations. And um, we found from Salzman that it was four Bs that was critical in that uh, article. And you can pronounce it B4. So the action that we should take should be taken before some more, some more suicide will happen. And these four Bs are, of course, in Swedish, but I will uh, translate them. Uh, the first one is meet. You have to meet individuals with evidence-based methods. And it's a good meeting for everybody, for, school, for children in schools, for uh, people at work, is very important. So we use this evidence-based method that is called EAM, Youth Aware of Mental Health. And we also have um, uh, Mental Health First Aid, Kiva and uh, Sense of Coherence. The next B is Treat. You have to treat... Uh, 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 this is for the healthcare personnel. You have to treat patients with both medicine and cogni cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, and you have to build, uh, build routines when transferring patients between different organizations from the school to the social service, from the health, primary health care to the specialist care. So that is also important. Uh, and the last one is limit. You have to limit access to drugs, alcohol, guns, hooks, ropes and other tools uh, that you can use. Uh, and we started a strategic group that was called B4. Uh, and uh, uh, they should work and communicate with their operating level at uh, the police, the, com the commune, the municipality and the county council on the operative level. And uh, at the end of this project, we also, yes, I should say, we also made an action plan that we are follow, followed every year to, to uh, see that we could do these um, uh, four Bs uh, continuously in the organizations and together. Uh, in the end of the process, we also applied for money to do a study uh, of the work we have done in Storeman. And we got funding from the Public Health Agency of Sweden. And they were especially interested in how to work in these issues in small municipalities in rural areas. And the aim of that study was to um, experience at to study experience at different levels in different organizations to introduce an evidence-based multidisciplinary way of work to prevent suicide among children and youth in a rural municipality. Actually, what did you plan, what did you do and how was it? And what do we do? Uh, we did interviews in three levels, in, on strategic level, on operate level and on the, in the target group. And of course we have help from the Department of Epidemiology and Global Health at Umeå University, since we couldn't examine ourselves. It's not ethical to do, <laughs> I think. Uh, and we are in the analyzing phase of this, uh, so we will uh, use a framework of implementation from mayors at all to report the results from this study. Uh, but uh, we did another uh, analyze uh, 
to see what the different levels thought about these things. And I have some results, if I have some time left. One minute, okay. I take just a few things. <coughs> and uh, it is in accordance with the previous speakers. Everybody knows everybody. It's safe to grow up in this small city, but it could be difficult to visit the healthcare center, as previously talkers have said before, because you know someone who works there. So the young people doesn't think it's easy to seek care. Uh, and uh, we can take another result. Work within the mental health and suicide prevention, emergency management and long-term perspective. It was, of course, increased anxiety among the staff and discussions about guilt and responsibility. And EIM, the youth program, Youth Aware of Mental Health, was good, but uh, many thought it was too much at the same time because every action was happening during a short time. So the students said, no, we don't want to have more about this. We, we wanted to look for the future. Um, and. Uh, Maintenance and follow-up to manage and keep focus over time is, of course, an obstacle to do for when it's uh, acute, an emergency, you're, act, you're active. But in the long run, how can you keep it as a priority? You are few professionals in, uh, in the rural area and they are, have a heavy workload. <coughs> And the prevention should, of course, be anchored at management level. Yes, uh, I can think I go to the last picture because it's a lack of time. And it's, of course, challenges in small scale communities. We have a small number and the confidentiality is important. <coughs> And you cannot report everything. Uh, sometimes you can't even report gender and age because everybody will know who it is. So we used to call it rural ethics. Uh, and of course, it's also mm. difficult to count power in our analysis since there is so few people. We don't take a sample, we take the whole population. Uh, and for many inhabitants in rural area, it's a long distance to specialist care and the healthcare center, and you don't have the same access to healthcare as in urban areas. So actually, I'm uh, uh, very glad that I that we moved to uh, to the sorry yes to the rural area. Otherwise, I haven't learned this. So I think that is very important. Thank you. I'm sorry for <laughs> for the, uh, the the little time I have. <laughs>